In a vision I once had, I saw the Church of God in the depths of a vast desert. In our flesh, we avoid deserts. The vision, I suppose, was metaphorical for the narrow path that leads to life. It makes no sense to think that if I was seeking the abundant life, that I would seek it in the desert. Yet there it was in my vision, the Church of God surrounded by a mighty desert. There was no way to the heart of it but by striking out and heading right into the place where my only resource, in fact life itself, would be God. If he didn't go before me, I would surely die. I would never get there. If he was not a cloud over my head, then the sun would kill me. And if he was not a fire by night, then I would surely freeze to death. Now, there's nothing alluring or attractive about the desert. In fact, quite the opposite, isn't that right? Lot chose the well-watered places and plains of Sodom, according to scripture, in which to dwell. It was near a wicked city, but it was plentiful, and life was easy. Yet at what cost does the choices that we make have consequences? We may not lose our souls in the process, but we certainly can have um, leanness of spirit, the very opposite of the abundant life. The cares of this world, the proximity to Sodom, or the ease that we have in Babylon certainly factor into our walk with the Lord. Only when we're asked to give up some aspect of this world or this place can we know what kind of hold it has over us. Lot's wife would have had her doubts, but we know her heart because in the end she turned around, didn't she? She couldn't handle it. The desert was not for her. And that was her choice to make. When we think about Moses and his 40 years in the desert prior to the burning bush, or indeed the children of Israel's 40 years in the desert prior to the promised land, we begin to see a pattern. John the Baptist's ministry was in the wilderness, the desert. Jesus himself spent 40 days in the desert, in the wilderness. It defies logic to go into this place, this desert place, to find life. Can there be life in the desert? Would we willingly choose to enter in a place where all flesh dies but for the Lord? Can we be drawn into a place where unless we encounter God, then we would surely die? God is raising up such a generation, I believe, that has found abundant life in the desert, in the wilderness. They have found that water indeed flows from rock at the hand of God, that God himself can make rivers in the desert. He can make a highway that leads to life, in fact, has. Will you journey there? Is there a desire in you to find God in such a deep way that he is life itself to you? and that without him you would surely die and have no desire to live. Let me encourage you today, saints. God has made such glorious and mighty promises to those who hunger and thirst after him with their whole hearts. Desert places, yes, yet a burning bush and some sand can and will be transformed into holy ground. There is a sacrifice to be made to come into this place. Do you desire to make such a sacrifice before the Lord? There's a generation of desert dwellers being raised. A generation of wilderness dwellers ready to rise up and come forth. A generation of saints who have counted the cost. Whose only desire is to seek Him first and His righteousness with their whole hearts. They will see the glory of their God. They will behold his glory and his majesty. And they will make declarations from that place. They will, like uh, John the Baptist, declare, Behold the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. Yet this generation that I'm talking about is also going to be able to say, Behold the Lion of Judah that rides on a white horse with a two-edged sword in his hand. He is coming. The King is coming. Lift up your gates, ye ancient cities, and lift up your doors, for the King of glory is coming, and he is coming soon. This is the purpose of God's remnant saints in the last days. We will make such a glorious noise from this desert place of worship to our King. We will sing hallelujah to his glory. Despite our circumstances, the anointing of the anointed one will be upon us, and the world will look into the desert place 
and hear a strange and glorious noise, a noise such as they have never heard before, and a light that shines out of a place where there, no, there should be no light, and there should be no life that exists, and they will be perplexed, and they will be confounded. The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in this holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul into vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord, and righteousness from God, of his, the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, Selah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Psalm 24. Amen.